Hey, have you heard? Four-Legged Life has a new digital newsletter. Here, let me show you how you get yourself subscribed. So you just type in Four-Legged Life, and that'll take you to the website. There we go. And this magic thing just appears, and you type in your email address. I'll use, let's see, how about coolest dog ever at gmail.com. <laughs> That's me. And then you just click on this uh, thing here. There you go. It's the new digital newsletter from Four-Legged Life. Get subscribed today. We're speaking with uh, dog trainer Scott Schaefer. He's like a top dog in this field. And he's not just, he's no longer teaching your dog in basic obedience, sit, stay, good boy, good girl. He has now having to focus on some key areas in dog behavior with his wife, Barbara, at the USA Dog Behavior Camp. And, and this is kind of sad, but it's also good that we have somebody like you. As I promised all of you, we're going to talk about two big issues, aggression, and then later in the show, separation anxiety. So first of all, I want to get into the power of the bite. On a dog, anyone, any dog can bite anyone at any time. So let's talk about the power of the bite, where it comes from, and it, is it kind of a last resort? for a dog that feels like they've run out of options? Oh, Arne, that is such a, a good question. And honestly, the challenge for me right now is to encapsulate that into a few minutes here because we could talk for a long, <laughs> long time about that. So a couple, I'm just going to hit some bullet points here, okay? Good. First of all, dogs don't want to bite. Dogs don't want to bite you. 99 point, and this is not hyperbole, 99.9999, of dog bites to humans are what we call inhibited bites. Meaning they're not going all the way because dogs can really hurt you if they really want to bite you, to hurt you like, like a prey animal. They're not doing that. They're just saying, get away. It would be like if someone got too close to you and you said, and you just gave them a gentle like, hey, can you move yeah. back? That's what they're doing. It's an inhibited bite. And, and so we have to remember that. And it usually is a last resort. You know, this, the sequence of bark, growl, bite, okay? Bark, growl, bite. And, and these are dogs telling us, and I know this is pretty much common knowledge, but we tend to forget it, is when a dog is barking or growling at you, they're doing you a favor. They're saying, I am not comfortable in this moment. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense to you. Key point there, it doesn't have to make sense to you, the human. It's just that I am uncomfortable. And I'm trying to communicate that. And in almost every single instance, our people would just stop their approach or stop handling a dog or whatever they're doing. The dog would go, I'm good. I'm good. However, well, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to say there are some very rare exceptions that I see these occasionally of like neurological reasons for the biting. So it is not predicated on fear and things like that. But those are so, so rare. It's almost always fear. So do's and don'ts. Obviously, uh, we're both fear-free certified, which is all about reducing fear, anxiety, and stress, started by Dr. Marty Becker. But I teach kids, you know, the ABCs, the doggy ABCs, ask permission, be sniffed, carefully stroke the back. This is art and more simple, simple. But what you know, they're giving us some verbal cues, but they also can give us some nonverbal cues that say back off. And can you address a few? Yes. And body language in dogs so fascinates me. In fact, I have a almost hour long body, body language video on my website. It's free because I just really want people to get educated on this. And that's from a half day seminar that I do on it. But what I've learned is a couple of things. One, Dogs are screaming at us. Dogs are <laughs> screaming information to us if we pay attention. Are we good at reading this body language? Kind of, but we have a long way to go. Yeah, but we see the big things. We see the big things. The other thing I wanted to mention, and then I'll answer your question. The other thing I'll mention is that did you know that dog body language really mirrors human body language a lot more than people ever realize? Wow. So so much more than people realize. For example, a pilo erection. So a pilo erection is what a dog does when it gets a little nervous. This hackles or rabies on its back. Okay. Oh my gosh! I thought you were thinking of another p word. Okay, keep I going. I know, I know. I'm getting nervous <laughs> with you on that one. 
<laughs> and but then we also say the hair in the back of my neck came up. So there's so many of those that are like that. But the obvious ones you want to be careful with are things like the first thing that a dog will do when it's starting to not feel comfortable is what? Close its mouth. Watch your dog. When a dog is sitting there panting, its mouth is open, it'll close its mouth. Just like a human, by the way. Humans yep. do the same thing. Okay. The next thing it might start doing, what these are common things to watch out, out for is lip licking. Mm -hmm. Now, not a competitive lick, which means food oriented, but for right. no reason, the dog starts licking its lips. And well, I have to tell you, I've been stung on that a few times, or should I say, <laughs> didn't, because that's a reliable indicator. It doesn't look like it's anything. It looks like it's benign. It's not. Another thing that dogs do is, of course, the whale eyes, the big eyes. One that I really like to look at is this stiff body. Their body starts getting stiff. Ears get pinned. And thing, they just get quiet. Boy, I'm telling you, it almost makes sense. Is that the lull before the storm? The, it's right? scary, isn't it? It's scary, isn't it? Because, yeah. <laughs> because you and I know that when they are doing all those things, something bad is about ready to happen. So look for those things, respect those, and stop touching the dog or move away. It's almost guaranteed to stop that problem. So let's shift to dog-to-dog -to -dog aggression. Because there's some mighty chihuahuas, and I have a part chihuahua, Emma, my Gemma. She's fine, but she's she's a big dog. She's four on the floor. And then there's some weenie Bernese Mountain Dog mix. So I don't think it's the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight in the dog, right? Right. Right. So talk about dog-to-dog -dog aggression. Is that on the rise? Is it because these dogs haven't had a chance to be socialized? What are some of the reasons and then we're going to get into how to stop a dog fight without you landing in the hospital. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, so dog-to-dog -dog aggression is the common cold of the dog behavior world. Wow, that's what a great phrase. Wait a minute, say that again. That's a sound bite. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's a sound bite. Yeah, there, yeah, so dog-to-dog -dog aggression is the common cold of the dog behavior world. It really is. But let me say something. I say common cold, and it's it's a little more serious than the common cold. That that can be a really a big problem for a whole host of reasons. And it really is independent of breed size, as you mentioned, a breed and the size of the dog. It just doesn't seem to correlate. I have clients all the time that say, "Well, why is my why is my Great Dane going ballistic when a little Chihuahua goes by?" And I like to say. You ever seen a grown man jump on a sofa when they see a mouse? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> make sense. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's in the eye of the beholder. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It makes sense to the dog. But this behavior is just a fear reaction. The dog is unfamiliar with a dog and is afraid of it. And he's using aggression to drive the thing away. And the crazy part about it is, as you walk by the on the street, oh, we could talk for so long about this. I love this, <laughs> subject, by the way. Yeah. I don't love that it's happening, but I like talking about it. As we walk by on the street, the dog is really amplifying its aggression. But Arden, let me ask you this. When you walk by and the dog takes that, the aggressing dog takes that one look back and stops doing that behavior, what do you think he thinks? Well, that worked. Yep. I was a, I'm was. i going to go to Vegas and play poker because I just did a major bluff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it always works. And what do we call that? Reinforcement, which is why this particular behavior gets worse because it's working for the dog. So they start doing it sooner and harder and almost without exception, it just gets worse. And the way that we measure that, by the way, one of the ways is the distance called the threshold distance. Good. And Normally, because I see pretty severe cases, by the time clients get to me, you're going to think I'm making a joke. It's not funny because it's true. We don't measure it in, in feet or across the street. We measure it in houses. How many houses away does your dog start to act, act aggressively? And in the more extreme cases, it's half of a city block. It's, wow. it's almost as soon as they see the dog, they light up because... They've been on this reinforcement schedule and, and have. So and have obviously we have to tune into our pet, not reinforce the behavior, but we have about a minute left before the break and it goes by fast. I know Scott, but 
how do you stop safely a dog fight? Two dogs are in a tumble, either in your house, your dogs, or on the street. How do you do it safely? What's a couple tips? Do's and yeah, don'ts. Great idea. Okay, first, first rule of number one is never reach in. Never reach in. Never reach in. Never reach in. Okay, I said it four times. Okay, yes. Don't do it. The the next thing to do. This is now once the dogs have connected. Don't panic. Don't ru- don't rush in there. Give yourself three seconds to evaluate the situation and the tools. If you had uh, the other owner is there, for example, and you're there with your dog, of course, you know the best way is to, is to reach around the back of the dog's hips, yeah, and lift them up and move them back. Okay. The wheelbarrow, <laughs> yeah, like a wheelbarrow. That's right. Yeah, on the insides of their hips, that works really great. Another great tool is just to grab, the dog has one, is to grab a dog's tail at the base of the tail and do the same thing. Never seen a tail come off. That's very <laughs> effective. That's very effective to do. Uh, a couple other things is in the moment is to grab something and, and push it in between them. A oh, good. Tra- yeah, a trash can works great, a bicycle, a chair, you know, depends whether you're inside or outside. Those those would be mine. A trombone, one a baritone, something. A yeah. trombone. That's right. Some fine china, whatever's around. <laughs> yeah. But but the main thing to remember, I would say, is don't reach in. I see really bad. It's called redirected aggression. And two, uh, take your time. Just take a second. Take a second. All right. That's great advice.